seated, please. And I hope you are with your Bible today. We're going to journey, uh, continue where we stopped. What part do we have now? What part are we going to treat today? In the, the greatest event in human history. Hmm? Thank you. Part three. The greatest event in human history. Part three. So, what is the meaning of Jesus Christ? The name Jesus Christ. Can you name your child Jesus Christ? That's the question. Matthew 16 verse 15 says, It said to them, But who do you say that I am? Understanding the name Jesus, understanding the name Christ is so important in our faith. In fact, every other thing hangs on this understanding. So as we are going to see today, Peter was able to answer that question. But when Peter answered this question, Jesus did not give him the credit. So he said, you didn't say this. This was not revealed to you ordinarily, but revealed to you by God. The greatest event in human history. So understanding who Jesus is, is the greatest breakthrough, greatest victory, greatest success in all of our lives. In all of life, for anyone born of a woman, understanding Jesus. So, what does Jesus Christ mean? What does, it, what does the name mean? The name Jesus Christ. Jesus, the name Jesus means Savior. God saves. And the name Christ means Messiah. Christ means anointed one, deliverer, Messiah. Now, in African culture, I want, you to, I want to make this so interesting for each and every one of us. In African culture, we don't just give names to children. We don't just give names to children. Because we quite, we quite believe that name can affect your destiny. Uruko ni roni, Yoruba people, they say this. Name like Cain, Judas, Satan, devil. These names, nobody wants to bear that name in African culture. Even the name Ruth, people try to run away from Ruth. It's not a bad name. But my people will say, Ruth, Abokoku. So, Many people don't want to name their daughters Ruth because of the circumstances surrounding the life of Ruth. But some, some, some people you know, in, in, uh, in African culture, they name their children Mary. I name my own first daughter Mary. Because of the advantages surrounding uh, the, the life of Mary, because it was blessed of all women. It was favored of all women. But what Mary passed through, no mother would like to pass through that. In the earlier time of when Jesus was born, if you read the scriptures very carefully, after a while, Joseph, the father of Jesus, disappeared in the scene. But Mary was always over there, even with the other you know, children, you know, about maybe six other children. They, I mean, there was a time people were saying, oh, your mother and your sisters and brother they are waiting for you. And Jesus was saying, no, those that are with me, these are my brothers and my sisters. Even when Jesus was being crucified on the cross, Mary was there. How many mothers can see their own child being crucified as a criminal on the cross? The worst punishment, the worst death you can give to anybody. Slow death. But Mary passed through this. 
So, the name Jesus, in some countries, in some countries, they have banned anybody name, you know, trying to name their children Jesus Christ. In African culture, you don't see mostly people naming their sons Jesus. For some cultures, or some part of the world, they do. Jesus. You know, call him, you know, Jesus. But they wouldn't, in the African culture, you wouldn't see somebody say, I'm Jesus. Mr. Jesus. You can see things like that. Or Christ uh, Peter. You can see something like that. But one of the names of Jesus Christ is almost being named by almost everybody in Africa. Emmanuel, God with us. I'm Emmanuel. There are many Emmanuels here. Emmanuel. In fact, Emmanuel, it's not one in this country. Because Emmanuel is so common. People want God to be with them. We know that names, when you give your child a particular name, that child's destiny can be affected by whoever first got that name. Now, I tell you, even in ordinary thinking of the world, we're in the time of Christmas, right? So, that is why I'm bringing this message to you. The greatest events, the greatest event in human history and understanding the name Jesus Christ. It's very important for a time like this. Christmas has been secularized, commercialized, demonized. But Christians, Christians, how do you look at it from your own perspective? That's what, that's what we're going to see today. Forget about the way people are looking at it. Forget about what that person is looking at this, the way that person. But you yourself is so important because the issue of salvation is personal. It's so personal. In, I, you know, in Iceland, in Iceland, um, there was a news in BBC in January of this year. This has been a very challenging year. But in January of this year, uh, an attempt was made uh, by a family to name their child Devil. Go and read it. it is, it's in the news in Iceland. And... This parent's sympathy was somehow won by the Iceland's official naming committee. Because this was the second attempt to name a child devil. But at a point in time, no sympathy was given by this committee because they believed that this child destiny will be affected in life. People may not want to employ this child. Teachers may not want to teach this child. So the debate was on. And then some parents say, okay, we are going to name this child Lucifer. Oh, the committee said, we are not going to allow that. No Lucifer. We are not going to allow that. Okay, they said, because they gave two reasons. Because the child is going to have a tough time in the future. And then they said also that in Iceland... The letter C is not in the alphabet. Okay, the parents say, okay, we will change the letter C to S, Lucifer. The committee said, no, we are not going to allow that. Eventually, they lost. You think that is, that is the end? In UK, a parent came and said, we are going to name our son Lucifer, the real Lucifer. This was just July 24, 2020. They said, we're going to name our, our son Lucifer. The registrar said, no, we wouldn't allow you to name this child Lucifer because this child does not know anything. You are taking decision for this child, a decision that may affect the life of that child. The name Jesus Christ. Jesus got this name. Because of you, because of myself too. You will be named Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Jesus the Christ, the Messiah of the whole universe. That is the purpose why we are here. And that is the purpose we are celebrating Christmas. Forget about the, the, the debate. 
People saying, no, Christmas is not about Christ. It's a pagan you know, festival. We don't have to celebrate this. We don't have to celebrate that. People saying so many things. Forget about that. The subject issue is Jesus Christ. Jesus. The Savior. Because he will save his people from their sins. So, a pair of UK parents is in the news. You can also read this one. Uh, July 24 this year in 2020, they won the, 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 the court case, the battle, to name their newborn son Lucifer. The registrar advised, the registrar can't say this parent, you cannot do this because names will affect the destiny of anyone. You would think that it's only in African culture we think that way. If somebody is bearing a name and some people have done something good about that name. If somebody along the line will have done something bad, the number of people that will be bearing that name will drop. You remember during that time they were killing armed robbers in Nigeria? You remember some other names? I don't want to mention those names because maybe the families might be here. Some of them were wearing, uh, you know, this kind of cloth, uh, lace, something. This, the setting of lace drop. Because an armed robber was, killed, was arrested while he was wearing that uh, dress called lace, that kind of lace. The market for that particular product dropped. He got to take some musician to sing and tell people, don't use bad, bad thinking about somebody putting on this, this particular dress. You just have to, you know, uh, talk to the person who put this on to go and commit, uh, you know, uh, you know, armed robbery? So, the UK parents, they went to court because they insist that they would name their child Lucifer. And eventually, they won. Um, because these are the reasons why they insisted that they would name this child Lucifer. They said, Lucifer in Greek means light bringer and morning and then they said lucifer is a good name yes it was a good name but satan that was bearing that name lucifer rebelled against god and that name was dented and then his destiny changed so from lucifer is called satan it's called devil. Because that name is connected to Satan, to devil, nobody wants to bear that name. In fact, if you bear that name and you want to run for a politi political office, you have your answer already. So, name is so important. Matthew 1.21 says, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. I don't want to bear Jesus. I don't want to be Christ. Because what he passed through, I don't want to pass through it. At a point in time, Christ said, he, he prayed, he went to the garden and prayed and asked God, if God can just take this cup, just if this cup can just pass over me. But immediately he said, let thy will be done. Because it is the will of God for Jesus to die for us. So it can bring us back to God. Luke chapter 2 verse 11. For there, is, for there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. A Savior who is Christ the Lord. John 4, 25 to 26. The woman said to him, when Jesus was having conversation with the Samaritan woman at the well. Remember that case? The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming. Who is called Christ? When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you, I am he. I am the Messiah. Christmas is about Jesus Christ. About Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Our perspective, and this is why we are going and we're going to talk about this few in a few minutes and we are going to close. Our perspective. What about Christians? We know that today in the world you can see how much you know damage has been done during this 
during this period, people are commercializing everything. They secularize everything. Some remove the name of Christ from everything. They call you know, happy holiday or they put something. They just wouldn't want, they want, they don't want to call Christ. Maybe because they are afraid of what befell Jesus Christ, that it will not befall them. They don't want to mention Christ. They don't want to mention Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ himself really wanted his disciples to get it right. And, and within that scope today, I want you to get it right. I want you to understand it. Please, it's so important that you understand this. The reason of why he came to the world, Jesus himself wanted his disciples to understand because he was laying foundation for them, which they will continue after his physical departure from here. Even up to now, not everyone got it right. Not everyone. The reason why everything about Christmas is secularized is just because not everyone got it right. Jesus quest for his disciples, understanding about his mission and destiny. The destiny of Jesus Christ brought him this name, Jesus Christ. He must, he must die on the cross. He must die a shameful death so that our sins may be forgiven. Our sins must be put on him. He must carry all our fault so that we can be forgiven. So, Jesus took his disciples into one of the best conversations of Jesus with his disciples. One of the best conversations ever. So let's join it together and look at this and we're going to pray. Matthew chapter 16 from verse 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, imagine Jesus has done so many miracles and as at now, these disciples, they have seen some actions from Jesus Christ. They have related with him for some time, and they have seen what he has done, how he helped people, how he healed people, how he fed people. They have seen that. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea after this uh, miracle, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who do, you, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? What do you think people are calling me? What do you think is the understanding of people about me, about my mission? What do you think? So they said, some say you are John the Baptist. Some said you are Elijah. Even some call you Jeremiah. Or some people say he's just one of the prophets. Even today, some are still saying Jesus Christ is one of the prophets. Jesus said, okay, forget about what people are saying. You, yourself, you, you. So they said, some say all this thing. He said to them, verse 15, but who do you say that I am? Who, oh, you, 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 you now. Forget about people. You have been with me. We have slept together. We have eaten together. We have been hungry together. We passed through many things. We have been chased around by people. We have been persecuted together. We have passed through so many things together. Now you have seen these things yourself. So if you don't get it right, then my mission is in a very serious disarray. So you, yourself, who do you think I am? With, all, with this short time, your observation. And each and every one of us should face this question. Who do you think Jesus Christ is? What is your understanding of Jesus Christ? Because if you don't understand the reason why his name is Jesus Christ or the reason why he came, you will look at Christmas like other people. There is this, uh, this so-called general overseer in Nigeria. He's saying, oh, don't celebrate Christmas. It's a pagan uh, you know, uh, event. It's a pagan uh, festival. Don't even do it at all. He got it wrong. Because it's not about that event. It's about Jesus Christ. Any opportunity we can seize to celebrate Jesus Christ is not even enough for what he has done in our lives. If you don't understand it, you will be like people like that. You have that kind of mindset. 
thinking that, oh, Christmas is a pagan something. It's not about Christmas. It's about Christ. Because Christmas is the celebration of Christ. Give me one. Put your hand together for Jesus. That is why we're here. That is why I'm standing before you today preaching. Because it is the celebration of the King of Kings. So, Simon Peter, verse 16. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Which means you are the Messiah. You are the Deliverer. You are the Savior. The Son of the living God. The Son of the Almighty God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my father who is in heaven, Peter, you don't get this credit. Because ordinarily, your mind cannot, cannot think about this. Your mindset cannot come to this conclusion. This statement is defined. Because you didn't say this on your own. But my father gave this to you. He, this is a revelation from my father. You got it right. Verse 18. And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, this is foundation. I will build my church. And the gates of Hades, some fashion we call it L, the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And that is why, regardless of what anybody is going to do, if Jesus Christ is in the, a particular ministry or a church, no one can pull it down. Because he said, I will build my church. Now, universal church, not local assembly. I will build my church, and no gate of hell can prevail against it. Whatever the world power can do, whatever people can do to put down the gospel, it is impossible to stop the gospel. The movement that we are talking about, this greatest movement ever that I spoke of in the last series, no one can stop it because it's based on this rock, Jesus the Christ. His mission is to save his people from their sins. Verse 19, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on heart will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on heart will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. But is that possible? That's very hard for disciples to do. Because all the activities of Jesus Christ was pointing towards the cross. All the focus of Jesus Christ was pointing towards the cross. There was no wasting of time. The three and a half years of his ministry was packed. Was packed. It was going around. And that is why all of us, please, let us take the issue of our salvation seriously. You, you, you don't have the time. If you have not given your life to Christ, if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you want to do it today. You don't want to delay. You don't want to push or procrastinate because tomorrow might be too late. Think about Christ. Jesus Christ. He will save his people from their sins. It is not right for you to take all the burdens of your sins yourself because somebody had already taken it for you. Somebody already took the bullet for you. You cannot kill a man two times. He died for you already. Why should you die again in your sins? And it's very simple. If you are listening to me or you are here in this congregation, you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, just think about Christ. Think about it. It's very simple. I have explained it over and over again. In fact, in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus explained all these things. Just regard yourself as being poor in spirit that you do not have what it takes to stand before God. You do not have that righteousness or that holiness because all our righteousness, they are like filthy rags. So you stand just on his righteousness alone and you say you are poor in spirit. You cannot save yourself. You cannot stand on your own merit before God and get a pass mark. Then if you get to that level, if you are seriously, if you, are, if you, are, if you, listen, if, if you seriously accept the fact that you are poor in spirit, then you will be able to mourn for your sins. Second beatitude. You should know this off, off, off and now. I've been saying this over and over again. You should be able to mourn for your sins. You'll be sorry for what you have done in the past. 
If you are not sorry for what you have done in the past and you said, oh, I have given my life to Christ, I have forsaken all my sins. No, you will go back into, into that sins again because you are not sober. But if you, if you are sober, if you, if you mourn for those things, for those things you, have, you have done while you are not a Christian, it will, it's going to be very hard for Satan to present that same scenario you know, to you and then you will embrace it. You will not embrace it. And then with humility, with humility, you will come before him and you will accept him into your life. That is the, the third beatitude. Meekness. You, are meek, you, you, you just humble yourself. After you know you are poor in spirit, you mourn for your sins, you humble yourself. Meekness. And then you will embrace the offer on the cross and the next thing will be you will follow him. Jesus always said, follow me. He didn't say follow a pastor. He didn't say follow a church. He said, follow me. Because he's looking unto Jesus, the Bible says, the author and the finisher of our faith. So, verse 20 again, then he commanded his disciples that they should not tell, they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. So, from that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and sheep priests and scribes and be killed, and be raised the third day. Anybody who read this, who passed through this, will never name his own child, Jesus Christ. Because you don't want your child to pass through the pains Jesus passed through. It was terrible. It was forsaken. At a point in time, Jesus cried, my father, my father, why hast thou forsaken me? Because then he was carried the old sin of the world. Ah. Oh. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. The same Peter who answered the question is now saying, Get behind, I mean, tiny Jesus Christ. No, you don't want you to die like that. You, are, you, do you, are you with your mind, Jesus? What you are saying is not good. Speak positive to yourself. What did Jesus say? But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. You know what Jesus did here? Jesus believed that Peter was being possessed by Satan. That what he just said can come from him. For Satan determined that Jesus will not pass through this pain. And without passing through the pain, we cannot have our salvation concluded. Because without crucifixion, there cannot be resurrection. So Jesus was saying what is part of his destiny. His destiny is a Messiah. His destiny is a deliverer. His destiny is to save his people from their sins. And it's not going to be easy. Most of us, we want life to be easy. Nothing is easy in this place. Jesus Christ found it very difficult. Jesus passed through tough times. Jesus was so much, I mean, even when he was, the right time he was born, they had to take Jesus Christ to Egypt, Jesus, they had to take him to run away from being killed as an infant. And then you think his life is going to be easy? As long as we have human beings on this planet Earth, it's going to be tough here. I'm just praying that 2020 should just go with us, his, his trouble. His brother that is coming in 2021, he should leave his brother alone. He must not advise that his brother, his junior brother. 2021 does not need any advice from 2020. Because 2020 messed up big time. In this year I was born, eh? this year, I was, this, 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 this time I've been live, I've never seen where church was shut down. Universal, all over the world. Somebody was just talking to me, uh, one of the pastors. He said, even they closed Mecca. You can't go and throw stone. They said, throw stone in your house. Don't come here and throw any stone to Satan. Oh, the Satan, you have thrown stone there. Have you ever heard that before? Close down that, that place. Every, almost everything shut down. They are still counting. In this country, it was like a joke. Now over 300,000 people. So, so you, you will be grateful to God for being here, for being alive. The Lord is good. 
This is a virus that does not know anybody. Both the rich people, the poor people, male, female, or gender, or race, or no, no place is excluded. No place. The power that be. Somebody was just talking to me about somebody who passed through that pandemic. He was governor. He turned to senator. He got all the money. Lo and behold, this money cannot rescue these people. Money cannot rescue these people. And you are telling me that, um, you know, we should not tell 2020 to go with us is trouble. In fact, we are going to bury 2020. We are going to have night I mean, crossover service. And we are going to do what? We are going to bury 2020. We don't want it to raise up his ugly head again. We, just want to, we, just, we are just going to tolerate him for this next one week. I tell you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I think my time is up. We will continue this. We are going to have a Christmas service here. Maybe it's going to be like 10 uh, in the morning or I mean 10 a.m. should be fine on Friday. And then uh, from there we are going to be having uh, prayer and fasting. We, we, we go, we're going to be concluding um, through the prayer line every day, 8 p.m. until we get to um, the last day of the year. That will be Thursday. Uh, Thursday next, next week. Not this week, next week. We are going to have crossover service here. For those who may not want to come, we understand. Some people still don't want to come to church. We understand. Nobody is blaming anybody. Just log in. We know, like Dr. Anthony uh, as far as he said, he said there is light now at the end of the tunnel. If you can see the, the man, if you see the man talking now, his face is different like he was talking before. Because he, he believes that there is light, what? At the end of the tunnel. Right there, there's light. And so, we overcome this. I'm just trying to talk to 2020. I don't hate you, but I don't, I did, I don't like what you did. So, goodbye. Don't come back. When we say goodbye to you, next week, uh, Thursday, is goodbye forever. And leave brother 21, 21 alone. Let him take decision on his own. And he shall be well with us. In 2021, he shall be well with us. It shall be jubilee. It shall be celebration. Over anyone, we shall not weep. We shall be strong. We shall overcome every obstacle. Father, we thank you. We bless you because we are a good God. Thank you for this day and this wonderful time we have to come together as your children. And Lord, as we conclude this year, that we pray there will be no carryover. To 2021. We pray God the Almighty shall, that we shall be victorious. Because the name Jesus means he shall save his people from their sins. We are saved from all the pandemic in the mighty name of Jesus. He is Christ the Lord. Which means he is our Messiah. He is our deliverer. He is our king. He is the one who can take away our sins. And so we, everything is been taken care of and we know it is taken care of. Even our future mistakes is taken care of. And so, Lord, we appreciate you. The greatest event in human history for Christ to be born into this world. Joy to the world because a Savior is born. We thank you, Lord, for this deliverance. We bless you, Lord, for this great time and this great event. We pray, Lord, as many that are here that have not given their lives to you, we pray that you will disturb their heart until they come to know you as Lord and Savior. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you because we are Lord. And for those of us that have given our lives to you, help us to continue to follow you all the days of our lives. Help us to continue to appreciate what you have done. Help us to continue to propagate the gospel. Even this time, that we shall not do like the world and look at Christmas just like a secular time or just a time ordinarily, but we shall look at this time to remember your birth, to remember the time the joy came to the world because you are our joy. You are our Prince of Peace. The time you came was the time of peace for all of us. Blessed be your name, Lord. See us through as we go. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise God.